Hi guys, today we're with Dr. Jen, the renowned pediatrician from New York City, and we're getting the details on how to get the most out of your pediatrician visit. Now, I'm sure, I'm like a lot of parents, I'm at the pediatrician a lot, and I always feel like I go there with a million questions and with all this good attitude, and by the time I get through the whole thing, I've been waiting forever, by the time I get in the room, I'm rushed in and out, I don't get my questions answered, and so it feels really... It just doesn't feel like a very valuable use of time. How do I get better use out of my doctor's visit? Help. Well, you definitely need some help. Because <laughs> you do only have those 20 minutes and you want to really make the most right. of it. So I think the first thing to do is call ahead. You know, even if you have made your appointment in advance, call ahead. Uh, make friends with that receptionist and she'll let you know should you come a few minutes later so you don't have to wait so long um, and see what's happening if the doctor's running so on time So do you have like a that. code word with her or him? <laughs> like, I don't know, early bird? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> They're like, yes, early bird. I don't know. Is that how it works at your office? I totally lost you. Who's <laughs> early? <laughs> <laughs> no, I totally lost you. Know, you know, when what you mean? call out the, pedi the pediatrician, you like press three for like whatever, uh, and they're like, hi, we're going to help you, you, just so they, you know, don't get caught saying things like, yeah, who's running late again? It's just like you stay on the phone, early bird, and they're like, ah, uh, <laughs> early bird. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just like a code between you and the receptionist. Yeah, no. No, okay. <laughs> Well, but it's true that they, they, good idea. Yeah, they, know, they, they know the doctor and they know, like, I run really on time. I'm, like, really, like, okay. obsessive compulsive about that. But I know, oh, and, right. Okay, so we're anyway. going to make friends with a receptionist. We're going to call ahead. What else? Like, what about how much time should I leave to get to the doctor? So it depends. If you're a new mom and you have a new baby, you really want to leave plenty of time, probably twice as long as you think. And, you know, not blaming on parents at all, but one of the reasons why I do run behind is because it does take that extra time to get there. You know, you've got to schlep the bag, and then you've got the baby, and then the baby vomits all over everything. You've got to change their clothes. So by the time you get in, you're usually 20 minutes or so late for your appointment, and that then backs everything up as well, too. So... You know, I can think be tricky. it can be very tricky. I mean, what about all these like earth-shattering questions that I have that I need to get answered, and I go in there, I'm all fired up, and then somehow they don't get answered. Yeah. So it's great that you have the questions to begin with. Um, some people don't. So actually, on my app, Baby Bundle, go to the section on uh, appointments, and you can really see for each of your baby's age, you know, what questions to ask in case you can't think of any. But being that you have so many questions, uh, when you go to the doctor yourself, Rosie, yes. um, ask them right up front. As soon as the doctor walks in the door, ask your question. Say, this is what I want to get through today. And I'll usually like, go ahead, tell me now. They're not going to think I'm really pushy. No, yeah. it's your appointment, right? Yeah, you should okay. ask your questions. And then the doctor can decide. They might answer them all right away, or sometimes I just, you know, hear what the patient wants uh, to ask me, and then as I'm examining the baby and asking my questions, I infuse the answers to theirs as well, okay. too. Now, what about bringing somebody with me? Is that a good idea or a bad idea? I'm going to be honest. Yeah. Sometimes I may bring a sitter or I bring somebody else, I feel a little bit judged. Like, I feel like they think that I'm not hands-on. No. Totally hands-on. I just also work. So, hands-on means you're coming to your appointment. Okay, good. So, as a mom, <laughs> coming to your pediatric appointments with the baby, awesome. But it's great if you can bring even a friend or a sitter, um, if there's a, even if there's other siblings, that like they can watch them. So, you can really pay attention um, to the doctor and get your questions, you know, really answered. And you can really focus. Um, and if the baby needs to get dressed or undressed, then that person can also help as well, too. So you should never feel funny about that. Okay, now this is my last question. At what point, basically, is your kid too old to be in the room where you're asking the questions? Because sometimes oh, I question. feel like I ask stuff and I'm like, I don't know if it was appropriate for Johnny Jr. to hear that. Well, it, it depends. It works both ways. I mean, oftentimes, if moms or dads have questions, um, I can ask them after the visit. Um, we can schedule another time to, to speak if there's other questions that you think may should be private without the child there. And also, as the kids get older, you know, about age 12 or so, I actually like to see the kids by themselves as well, too. So they have some time alone with me as a pediatrician. Um, and then also uh, time with the parent in the room as well, too. And I think that they get to know that this is going to happen. So then as they get older, they can ask all their questions. That is they that when they tell you that mama drinks wine in the bathtub? <laughs> <laughs> Can't divulge those things. <laughs> Thanks, Dr. Jen. You're welcome. Follow me at Rosie Pope for more useful information or go to rosiepope.com and if you have ideas for videos you want me to make, just let me know.